Yo, what is up everybody? TrevCG here with Dredge and Explorer. Um, now, the last video I posted was Phoenix, and that is a deck lined up to gain a lot potentially from Explorer Anthology 2, you know, if we get Treasure Cruise. Fire Impulse already previewed, also another brings to the deck. Another one is Dredge. Now I'm less confident about this because Prize the Amalgam uh, was in Shadows of Innistrad. I think they might save that for Shadows of Innistrad Remastered coming next year. I'd love it if they introduce it to the format now. I think that'd be really, really cool. There are a bunch of other cards in Shadows and Eldritch Moon that they could print um, in that set. Um, but it would make a new deck now. Because, like, Dredge is not really one of the most loved archetypes in Explorer. And you have to work quite hard to make things work. So, here we are. We're playing Grixis. You could also try and build a Soul-type version of the deck, but I think with, like, Grizzly Salvage and with a Bloom Command. But I think if you're going down that line, you're maybe better off playing something like Grease Fang. And the payoffs, like kind of the green splash, aren't as good as Ox of Agonis and Croxel, which we're playing here for red. Um, so, two of our main payoff cards. Ox of Agonis, uh, three red, red, four, two, ETB, discard your hand, draw three cards. Let's you dump some of the cards that you don't, you've drawn that you don't really want in your hand. And also let's you refill, find more some more mill effects, and get going, while making a 5-3 attack here. Oh well, 4-2 attack from your hand, but really the payoff is that you red, red, exile eight other cards, Bring back from your graveyard and then do the ETB. Discard, draw three for two, make a five three. Pretty nuts. Croxer, uh, more well known. You play it from your hand, it's fine, whatever, but mainly you're playing to, to escape it from our graveyard, kind of as a. We might as well play one, it's in here. And the other card we get for Flashing Red is Scrapwork Mutt. There are a number of new escape cards from Brothers War, this is just one of them. Uh, I was debating between this and the one that is one in the black, comes back to the 3 1 and access card from a graveyard. But the ability to really discard, here, discard and draw here, help you refill, help you filter through the Narc Amoeba, Silver Moat Ghouls. Like having a way to discard Silver Moat Ghoul is actually really, really important. Similar with the Ox and the Croxer. Which you can cast those from hand, though. Um, but then also does that again for the graveyard, obviously, with the Unearth ability. Once we get Price Amalgam, even better. Obviously, the Unearth brings back the Price Amalgam. Yada, yada, yada. Um, Silver Moat Ghoul, one of your main payoff cards. It's a 3 1. At the beginning of your upkeep, you can gain 3 or more life this turn. Remember, and turn it to the battlefield at. Um, at the beginning of your turn. You pay one of the black sacrifices, it, but it's a 3 1 attacker, and it is enabled by one of our other payoff cards, Creeping Shell. Uh, 3 and a black, but you're not normally casting it. Occasionally, you do. You know, you draw one in your hand, you're like, oh, I can bring a couple of these back. Let's cast it. May as well, right? Get 3 damage in. Blinding Helix. Uh, when Creeping Shell spawns your graveyard from play, from play. When you, when you mill it, you can exile it. If you do, it'll three damage each opponent and you gain three life. Which is nice, it triggers Silver Ghoul. Another thing that triggers Silver Ghoul, and it's kind of a new addition, in a way, is Sovereign's Bite. It's a card from M19, but it's simply, target player loses three life, you gain three life. Um, I've seen versions of the deck that play the one and the, the, the one black-green hybrid uh, gain four life lesson learn card, which is kind of neat, but this all contributes to us kind of being able to burn our opponents out, have a bit of reach, and again, this kind of takes us to our next card, which is Founding the Third Path. Uh, from Denominator United, another enabler, and is a Saga with a read ahead ability. You can cast Instant Sorcery from your hand without paying its mana cost for the first step. Uh, it costs one or two less. The main things we're doing, Sovereign's Bite, Other Worthy Gaze. Again, cast it from your hand for free, and for free. But then the second part is the Mill Four cards. Obviously the main like enabler bit, we're milling ourselves. That's kind of the point of the deck. But then we can act, the third step is exile an instant sorcery from your graveyard and copy it, and you can cast a copy. You have to pay mana for it, worth bearing that in mind. But it means that if you're going like, okay, I'm going to sovereigns by early in the game, you can't recast it later while digging for like more creeping chills and things. You actually have a lot of reach, um, and the damage really, really accumulates, while also contributing to your main game plan and being able to move yourself. And then obviously, if you don't have a spell to cast, you can just play it in stage two, immediately mill the four cards, and then go on. Um, it also synergizes really nice with cyber cards, so you can cast Thoughtseize with it, Thoughtseize your opponent in a bunch. Pretty cool. Uh, and then you're kind of like more traditional neighbors. Secret Keeper, just mill four. Uh, we don't have access to like Tome Scour. That's when I, I if they if they put it in EA2, I'd be really surprised because it's a pretty innocuous card. It's a card that like, like it's not going to be like selling the bundle exactly, but it would be. An, it's, it's a nice to have. I think we're going to have to probably wait a long time for maybe. Um, there are a few other things for the deck that I'm like, these would be nice cards, but Maybe not yet. Uh, Otherworldly Gaze, Survey 3, Flashback for 1 in the blue. Great, helps you find the cards you want, while also obviously putting the cards in the graveyard. And then Stitcher Supplier, kind of your quote unquote best, because it um, also blocks versus aggro. Uh, ETB, or die, mill 3 cards. 
Great, awesome. That's the deck. The mana base is fairly straightforward. Four Blood Crypt, four Steam Vents, three Watery Grave, um, simply because it doesn't make Red Red or Lots for Gonus, and then four Reside Pathway and four Blightstep Pathway, kind of rounding that out. 19 lands. I'll be honest, the 41st card is the Croxer, which kind of might as well play one. And you don't really need many lands to function very well. Um, sideboard. So, some interesting things here. Uh, let's start with the four Thoughtseize. As I said, uh, you can record them with Family of the Third Path, but importantly, you're bringing them in in almost every matchup because your opponent is going to have some kind of graveyard hate unless you take that. I think that's a nice one. You do some graveyard interactions with something like Grease Fang, into the speed, while also being able to gain the three life you need to enable Silver Moat Ghoul. Oop. Um, and giving you some kind of like late game sustain. And like, once you've dumped some stuff into play, if you need to protect yourself from something like Grease Fang, you can hold this up for the four mana out your graveyard. Other graveyard hate, three copies of Ashiok. Oh, Ashiok's a really nice one. Mills a play for four cards, that's target, but then it exiles your opponent's graveyard. So you can mill yourself for four, exit your opponent's graveyard, excellent. Then also stops your opponent searching, extra upside there. But it's also a repeatable mill effect, which is just super, super nice anyway. Like you could actually choose to play some of these main deck if you want. Um, you feed the swarm is kind of the kill spell of choice. It also, it's enchantments, which again is relevant depending on what creatures your opponent's playing um, in terms of what they're going to have as graveyard hate. Um, Rathia's Cage has kind of fallen out of favor. Well, you may be. And, hey, we've not got really great disenchant effects in Grixis Colors anyway. Maybe that's a reason to play Soul Tie. Um, but yeah, and then lastly, three Mystical Disputes. Protect yourself from cat spells, especially when recurring Oxygonus. Generally, you're kind of like, I'm going to go off and do my thing, and then I'm going to use this, uh, use Oxygonus to catch back up. And you want to be able to basically protect this cast to then refill your hand and stuff. Um, but then also just having some interaction versus blue decks. It's actually just really nice. Um, and then you have it. There's Dredge. It's a deck that I think stands to gain a lot as more cards get printed into the format. That's kind of the focus for this week, I guess. Um, and we're going to take it into a ranked match. If you're interested in Explorer content, uh, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, maybe subscribe to the channel. Uh, and if you have a deck that you're like, hmm, I think this would be good, or this could get some new tools, uh, please let me know in the comments. I'm looking, I will be doing a bunch of different things as EA2 comes out. Obviously, just keep getting more spoilers. It's now seven days away, I think. So, yeah. Cool. Let's go up into a best of three match. Yeah. This week, kind of like looking at some decks that stand to gain a lot. Um, and then this weekend, I'll be posting a video with five decks that I'm planning on playing basically in the first week. And five decks with cards from EAT. And then, obviously, next week when the set comes out, I'll be playing a bunch of them and posting those. So, there's a bit of an awkward one. We've got no, no actual enablers. Like, I say that. It feels like a build six anyway, because we've got Nightwing on our hand, even though you can cast it. We have, like, Scrap Hug, Mutt, Dump Silver Mutt Ghoul into Sovereign's Bite. But it's pretty slow. Like, we're getting this back on turn three. We're getting some damage in. But I think I want to mulligan this. We're on the draw as well, so this is even you gotta think this is even slower than you kind of think it is at first. I'm gonna mulligan this. <laughs> now we've got two Malaka Beavers, which feels bad, but we also have a turn one um kind of starter, so we'll take that. We're playing twelve of them with our um with such a supplier or another. So you ideally want to always start with one. And we're just gonna kick straight off here. Make sure we cast the right half of it, target ourselves. Alright. Chill, but no creatures. Fair enough. So, like, huh? We have a choice now whether we want to make the scrap the mutt, discard the ghoul, or just jam founding. Um, they've actually got quite a slow start here. Oh, we have this too. Well, this will be able to block one of these. Hmm. Do you want to take a turn setting up is the question. Okay. So eventually this can recast the Sovereign and get this back from the graveyard. Uh, it just depends on what we think is going to do things.
basically, if we're playing fast, we want to make the player plus secret keeper, which still gets to block a little bit. If we're playing slow, we want to play discard this and then jam stuff next turn. This also digs towards the third land, which we actually do want at this point. So I think we're going to do this. We're going to dump the gold into the graveyard. All right, we find a land, which is nice. I don't get to evolve one of these this turn. Okay, they have a third spirit with a special save. Do they have a obsession effect? Here, I'll see it. I'm just going to main up one of these. But I will throw this under here. We're not really, like, this isn't going to do a whole ton. I think taking the opportunity to trade with the fly the things that eventually become flying is pretty nice. Now we get to do both of these. Um, I will supply it first. Hit. We hit a second silver mic. Oh wait, how many cards are there? Okay, I'm gonna set up to do that next. I'm gonna pay two life. Play this. Oh, do they have a spell piss? Maybe they have another spirit. It looks like they have another spirit. We don't have an instant sorcery to cast. We're just gonna play this so it comes down on the two side. Bill sells for four. Oh, we hit Creeping Chill? Oh, okay. I was like, we're setting up to cast uh, Sovereign's Blight next turn, but actually, we get these all back now. Get some life back here, too. And we still probably will do that. Get the ghouls back, and all of a sudden, now we're pod racing. Hmm. Gonna get to block this as well. More cards in. That should let us get Ox online as well. I don't think if we're vulnerable to getting lethal here, I don't think so. Honestly. So we can cast this and make Ox. Uh, yeah. That's the play, right? I think so. This also, I think, I think this is, yeah, green you. Just remember like, that there is interaction they can have here. For the minute, we're still not kind of like a lethal clock yet. I'm gonna go through, which means that these come back as well. Um, we need to combat. Ready for combat now. Remember, this can only block you to fly. It can block the mark either, but that's fine. We probably just have that. And now I'm five, so we can either go for the R or ourselves. I think we make the R. Yeah. Yeah, because we can bring back two hasty creatures with an, uh, next turn. I, I feel bad thro throwing away like a mill effect, but. Okay. Eight total. Hit the land. Close two. Close. This isn't kind of expecting to get counted, but. Fair enough. Mm. The Crocs is also kind of surprise damage. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, I shouldn't have attacked the Mark either. That was a bit of a punt. To get this thing can actually block. There. So, into Cyborg Games. I am a little worried about something like Cage in this matchup. I don't have tons of answers for it. I'm. T I like the swarms and then the disputes. Pretty strong. I don't want to bring in Thoughtsies. I don't think so. Um, it's better than the real spells. The problem with Thoughts is it kind of like. I 
think this is fine. I like Ox for the two mana. I think Crocs is a bit too clunky here. Other things, the Narc Amoebas versus the offline deck do get to block a little bit that aren't very efficient other than that. And blocking isn't really what we're about. That's kind of silly. They're really, really good with Prize Amalgam, obviously, and they're good enough that you want to play them in the main deck game one. But versus the deck where they're like, okay, they're not really going to be able to push any extra damage through, kind of call your opponent out. Not necessarily worth it. All right, we'll see here. But it's on the play, so really trying to avoid getting like Spectral Spirits, uh, Curious Obsessions. Which should be fine, it's the Geist Light Snare that comes after that that's the problem. But hey, we'll, we'll see how it goes, we'll see how it goes. Okay. Well, we have Blood Crypts that just apply, but we also have all these... I'm gonna send this one back, this one we will keep. I am gonna bottom a land. I'm going to assume this is a one mana creature. If I play like, if I go like, I want myself a four. So, the interesting thing here is that we don't get to double spell next turn if we play a black spell here. Because we only, we, well, not guaranteed anyway. I think actually we want to secret keep ourselves and then hold the Stitcher Supply so we can play it off the Blood Crypt next turn along with one of these. Um, I think that's the smart thing. To do. Obviously, if we draw a land, doesn't matter, but hey, okay. can't always rely on that. Okay, and Mutt into the graveyard's kind of interesting. No one drop. I hmm. oh, don't want to draw that, but that's okay. So, do I want to hold up at the Worldly Games? We'll see. I'll play this as a supplier, see what we hit. It, uh, because we hit a ghoul, I think we're quite intensified to cast the games now. We want all these in the yard, right? Maybe we keep a... If we keep a Watergrave on top, we then get to go... That's actually... How many cards in our grave? Three... Wait, no. Seven. Eight would be the... The still puts eight cards in the grave. Hmm. We don't have double blue anyway. For it. This lets us go... Gaze plus Mutt next turn. I think that's fine. Also, we kind of want to cast a Screeping Chill now that we've got some ghouls in our graveyard. I think we have two. Yeah. We'll see how defensive they play here. Whether they want to kind of hold up some interaction or not. With the Ascendant Spirit, we definitely want to leave the Citrus back to block. Um, I think I'm going to cast this with no... Now, I don't mind the... Uh, I will loot away the Screeping Chill. Just because we're not looking to necessarily draw, like drawing our first land would be fine, but not one what we want. I'll leave with this without revealing our land, just because, yeah, they counter this instead of something else. Um, yeah. no attacks. I should do this now while they can't interact with it. I think. Uh, we actually want the red sword. Go on top. Because then what? We're drawing this, can bring it back, make it. But. Okay. What about it? Does that affect whether we block here? I guess it does. So we can't block the Senate Spirit forever, but we would like to. Hmm. We're on 16, I think we're fine to do that. They pump that. Like. About like avoiding getting the gold this coming to possibility. Now. I'll start off by attacking with the group. Okay, trading with the Maslinian Wonder is great. 
I need trading cards. If I can, I want to leave these other wildies with here. Three, five. Basically, four stacks of them. There's another line here where I go shock, cast this. Um, not doing it. Oh, they might have a trade. I think that we're pretty heavily incentivized. Try not to play. The mill six is pretty strong though. Uh, I think we ox. Um, a little rough, but these are all the things we kind of want to. In this case, whether we leave a silver moat ghoul or whether we leave a, I think we leave the the silver moat ghoul. Hey, offering. Discarding a a mutt. We're still going to be able to bring one back next time. We've got the ghouls to play it. Depends what we hit off the ox. Or, you know, if it resolves. We also have the Sovereign's Blood on top of our library, which we know about. That's kind of awkward. I think that exiles it. I'm not actually 100% sure on that. It does go back to hand. If it goes back to hand, I want to play this now. Get it into play. And we'll get rid of this chill, because we know we've got the Sovereign Blood on top of our library. But if there's a land under this, we want it as fast as, as, fast as possible. Much. Hmm. 11 plays 14. Interesting. I wonder if they activate the fly here. As far as it goes from 2 to 4. Ooh, Mystical Street is kind of huge. Than both of these attackers. Try and force one of these to trade? Maybe they don't. But not to. Fight. They have Lofty Denial. I want to force this through because it gets both of them back. Life back. I'll play the Secret Keeper. Get it out of there. Does also block. Okay, we get to bring back our ghouls. This is why we play. This is why we play. And the concession. There you have it. Bricks a stretch. In action. Taking down Mono Blue Spirits here. And hey. Again, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button. Please like the video. If you've got decks you want to see in Explorer, let me know in the comments. Or if you've got cards you want to see in other formats, hey, okay, hit me up with those too. Explorer is my main thing. Um, obviously, with EA2 coming around the corner, we keep getting spoilers over this week. If there's particular cards from Explorer Anthology 2 you are hyped about, um, want to see me build decks with and play around with, uh, I've got a bunch of stuff planned, but we'll do my best to cover as much as possible pretty much. So, hey, let me know in the comments too. Take care. Have a great day. Peace out.